Hey everyone, welcome so much. We are excited for you to be here and we've been looking forward to getting together. Um, we have the chance to get together a few times a year and uh, this is one of them. So it's it's always fun to be with uh, my two friends, Michael Neal and Dickon Bessinger. And uh, you know the topic, silent mind, comma, beautiful feeling. So um, we're going to speak a little bit about that and uh, we'll see where it takes us. Um, yeah, please, who wants to start? <laughs> I nominate Dickon. <laughs> I agree. You know, I mean, Natasha and Michael and I are old friends and we've we've done this program a couple of times before and we absolutely love the topic so much because we think it gets to the heart of everything that's important to learn about life and uh, so we didn't even think of changing the topic but over time, we've continued to have our own insights. And so we have new and fresh. And what we think has been lessons learned from us, the things we're excited about and can't wait to share. So uh, I'm glad we have some time to introduce this in, in this webinar and then I can't believe we're going to have three and a half days to luxuriate in what we promise is not hearing about the principles, but experiencing them directly. Now, isn't it interesting that Sid says, if you have any insights about the role thought plays about the true nature of consciousness and mind, that it will take you right to a quiet mind automatically. It'll take you to a meditative state, sometimes he would call it, that what he was passionate about in terms of how people could experience, get a glimpse of what he experienced when he had his enlightenment experience. And he said, you get a glimpse of what I experienced. And he says, anybody can, anybody, anybody, anybody. But he did point and make suggestions for how any of us could touch a space inside of us where transformation happens naturally and automatically. He would simplify it because he, he thought it's so simple. It's so simple. You let go of everything you're thinking. You you stop paying attention to what your thinking is saying just for a moment. Sometimes he'd beg us just for a second. Everybody gets excited about it. Nobody does it, he'd say. Just, just for a second. Let go of everything you're thinking. Pay no attention to it. And what arises naturally is just this quiet space. Sometimes he'd call it a conscious space. Free of the contamination of our conceptual mind. Before all concepts. Is this space in everybody? And it's silent because there's no noise from your personal mind, the usual yammer, yammering away. 
it's silent. It's always there in every person, in every moment, no matter where you are, what you're doing. It's like in an ocean, you have all the turbulence on the surface. You go a little deeper, it's always quiet. It's always there. It's inside of everybody at every moment. But when we're paying attention to the noise, we don't recognize this awake, quiet, open, present state. And anyone, when you begin to explore that state, which is my favorite thing to do, I know it's what it's it's where Michael and Natasha and I are such kindred spirits is we love exploring the quiet of that space, resting in that space, being renewed in spirit in that space. It's a gift. It's a freedom. I can't. I, I can't wait at another point to talk more about why, for centuries, people have called that the freedom space. Absolute freedom. No matter what your situation, no matter what's going on, it's the experience of freedom. Freedom from judgments, freedom from shoulds, freedom from who you think you are. Absolute freedom. And in that quiet, free, open, vast space, there's a movement of life energy that's always happening. And the experience of that is a feeling. But it's a feeling before the intellect. So you don't even have to label it. We just say it's a beautiful feeling. Sometimes it would even use the word nice. Most of my life I hated the word nice, but the way Sid used it is like, there's a feeling that when you're not in your conceptual mind is so beautiful. It's so nourishing. And the final part of that is in that feeling, you'll find all the guidance you need to help you navigate any situation or circumstance you're in, no matter how difficult it is. And boy, do we have stories to tell you about how wise that space is. So. There it is, the essence of Sid's teaching in my mind. Look within, there's silence. And in that silent space, there's a feeling. And in that feeling, there's guidance. And Sid would say, it's so simple. That's all I've been saying for all these years. One time he said this, that's all I'm saying. It's so simple. What could be more simple? Look within, there's a silence, there's a feeling. And in that, you'll find all the guidance you need in life. So it'll be really fun to experience that more and more deeply with you as we go. So that's what I'm excited about. I, I was thinking about how, how this, this really is one of those um, experiences where it, it, it does what it says on the tin. In other words, if you're wondering what your experience of coming along will be, um, it's probably going to involve a silent mind and a beautiful feeling. And what I love about the simplicity of that is everything else flows from that. That's as far upstream as I know how to get. That's as close to source as I know how to get. And there, I, I've been uh, seeing a lot lately about what kind of always happens uh, in these kinds of experiences. And, and it, 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 there are sort of three things. And, and one is 
we each in our own way presence god presence mind presence spirit presence self presence the purest form of life and in a in a group it it amplifies it 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 gets louder and clearer the signal um you know if you've ever driven around listening to uh, listening to the radio in your car and you, you know there's certain when you get closer to the station or you get a station that broadcasts stronger it, that signal comes through really clean and then there's a lot of static at other times and and there's there's a kind of an amplification when you get a group of people coming together in this space the signal gets really strong and because the signal is so strong it, it's it's a lot easier to drop the static it's a lot easier to ignore the habitual noise of yeah but what about and if yeah but if so then can, oh, and 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 just come back you know to what what dickon and natasha have written beautifully about to come home to ourselves come back to to life and and so that's something that that pretty much always happens. Second thing that pretty much always happens is we, we get reflective. When you're quiet, it's not that nothing comes to mind. It's that what comes to mind, you see so clearly. So if you think about like a, a, a pond, if it's still, Whatever flies over the pond is reflected in the water. And there's a lot of beautiful photographs in the world of things being reflected in still water. And so as we get siller in our minds, whatever comes to mind, we can reflect on. We see more clearly. If you have a mirror, mirrors reflect. But if the mirror is moving around like this, it, it looks like whatever it's reflecting is all distorted. But when the mirror is still, well, then you see what's really there reflected in it. And we see what's really true, what is in the mirror instead of what isn't. And then inevitably there's disruption. It, it, it messes with the habitual patterns of how we show up and how we think and i think one of the great gifts of disruption is that it makes us it makes it easier to sense what doesn't get disrupted what is inside us that is indisruptible undisturbable imperturbable So we start to see that there is no experience we can have that's us because experience comes and goes. There's no thinking we have that's us because thinking comes and goes. There's no feeling emotion that's us, even if we talk about it that way, because feelings, emotions come and go. But we are that which experiences. We are that which thinks. We are that which feels. And the feeling of that, the sense of that, to me is beautifully encapsulated in silent mind, beautiful feeling. And from there, life unfolds. Life unfolds beautifully. Life unfolds bizarrely perfectly. And it's just that when, when we're all up in it, we don't notice. 
And so we think we got to get involved and we got to fix this. We got to change this. We got to do this. And we become busy little beeves. Beep. That was a combination of bees and beavers, beeves. But, you know, we're, we get busy because it's busy up here. So it looks busy up there. But when we find that space in us, that place in us, that space of meditation, that space before thought, we just get to be part of it. We get to be part of the unfolding. And it's a, a beautiful way to be in the world. And it seems to be the way we were designed to be in the world. And, and so for me, what I'm just most looking forward to is just spending a few days deliberately, purposefully being there, being who we are, letting life unfold as if by design. Because I know that it lingers. Like each time I go into an experience like this, it, it amplifies it, it gets louder, it's beautiful. And then sometimes people go, but what if it goes away when I leave? It, 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 it's not, it can't. Because you are it. And, and that, I don't know if any of you are wine drinkers, but I, 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 I was a cheap wine drinker for a number of years. And so if somebody told me wine had an aftertaste, I would go, yeah, it's icky. But then one day we had good wine, like beautiful wine. And it had, they don't even call it an aftertaste. It had a finish. There was a taste that lingered that was beautiful. And so that for me is a lot of the gift of taking time to go home and to hang out and, and to soak it in, knowing that it will linger and it will continue to do wonderful things for our bodies, for our minds, for our psyches. And, 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 and it's healing. It's good for whatever ails you. And, and uh, so I, it's funny, I saw it on my calendar that this was, this was what we were doing today. And I was like, oh, good. I could do with a bit of that. And I think we can all do with a bit of that. And so I'm looking forward to being there with you. It's so interesting that this is our natural state. This is our this is who we are. Our being is silent or silence. And we overlook it because we have a tendency to be caught up by our busy thinking. And so it's so interesting when we look for this, the words look within we start to notice more and more of the time that it's always here. It really is who we are in essence. And I loved when you, the metaphor you used before, Michael, with like a, a lake or a pond, when it's silent, it reflects the beauty around. And so it's inevitable that as we fall into our natural being, who we are, we see beauty around us. We notice beauty in people. We notice beauty in ourselves. And it's not that this silent mind is means that it's the absence of thought. It just means that we are not caught up in it. We recognize that something inside is free already is resting already is being already nothing to do nowhere to go 
simply resting as who we are. And then you touched on this also, Michael, on this about how we can start to notice. I think the more familiar we get with this dimension of ourselves or this space inside of ourselves, the more we start to notice the nature of, of thoughts, feelings, experiences that come and go. And we can know those thoughts, feelings, and experiences without being caught up in them. So it's not that that stops. It hasn't for me yet. I don't know about you guys, but I certainly have lots of thoughts, feelings, and experiences going on. But I do notice that more and more of the time, I'm aware that that's going on. And I am not so attracted to the drama anymore. I'm more attracted to staying as being. And I also love how resting here more of the time doesn't mean that we don't have fun in life, that we don't go to parties with our friends or go on vacations and are with our grandchildren. It's another way of being in life. There's a lot more enjoyment in each moment. Again, because we see the beauty everywhere. It reflects inside and outside. One of the things I enjoy mostly about being with the two of you is how we we see we're pointing in the same direction and we have slightly different ways of saying things. And I love how we inspire each other as well. Like every time we've done this retreat together, it's it's so interesting what shows up. No plans, just what is in the room? What is being called for? What is What are we being guided to say? So it becomes an adventure. There's a, there's a trust when we start seeing more of the time that there's this guiding force, this wisdom that seems to know in which direction to go. And so in this present moment, just really noticing and kind of being interested in, I wonder what will come out of my mouth next. <laughs> there's, a, there's a really sweet surprise around life when we are able to just rest in our natural state and see what the next part of life shows us what I'll say, what I'll do, what you guys will say and do. There's a, a delight in life as we rest here. And not that it's always sunshine and ice creams, but that guiding that comes from within also helps very practically. And I know that we'll, we'll speak about that too as we get together in the retreat. So I'm just excited about being back together with you guys. I, I love what Dickens said about, that, that Sid said everyone gets excited about it, but nobody does it. Like for me, that's, a, that, that, that's part of an experiential retreat as opposed to a, a lecture or a series of lectures or a training course is is it's like yeah 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 L let's talk about it when we actually know what it is let's talk about what we're experiencing not what's possible to experience when you experience the enlightenment and the silence and the stillness and the breakthrough and the moment of satori and it's like no 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 it's here now and as we notice it now we start 
to know what we're talking about, to know what everybody else is talking about it, because it is a real lived understanding. You know, I if if um you know if 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 I could go back in in time and and translate <laughs> what 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 Sid was pointing to into different words, I I probably wouldn't would 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 move the word understanding out of the conversation a little bit because for me for so long understanding was well do i understand it i think i understand it let me see if i understand it let me see can i explain it? and it, it's it never touches the sides at that level it's just ideas it's nice ideas but it's just ideas i have found the difference between this conversation as really interesting and life changing game changing is 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 it am i actually in it when i say do i know what i'm talking about not do i know what i'm talking about up here do i know what i'm talking about do i know what sid's talking about what natasha's talking about what dickens talking about because i i'm in it it's like oh that's what this is that's what this quiet is that's what this feeling is like i've i've always felt that the one of the values of being able to describe it to put words to it is it it it, it stops me from creating superstition around it because there were moments throughout my life where I experienced a silent mind and a beautiful feeling where I was at home in myself. But boy, did I make shit up about that. Oh, well, yeah, okay, it's because I'm practicing this meditation. Or, oh, well, yeah, it's because um, I've come to see the truth of this teaching. Or, oh, yeah, it's because I was fasting. Or, oh, yeah, and it's like I had so many reasons for what I eventually came to see was just life as it is, just me as I am before all my reasons. And there's just something beautiful in the simplicity of that. There's something, you know, things arise in this space. Joy arises in this space. Delight arises in this space. Peace arises in this space. Love arises in this space. Uh, but 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 the space itself is who we are and we can't lose that we cannot notice it for a while like you can't lose your oh man i forgot my nose at the hotel hang on i, I gotta i gotta go back like it's, it, it doesn't work that way Oh, you know what? I I left myself at the retreat. I need to go back and do it. it. No. No, you can't. With the best will in the world, you can't. And and there's something for me so reassuring about knowing I can't fuck this up. Because if I could, I probably would. And I love that I can. I think there's a incredible kindness to how well we're made that we can't mess it up. But over the three and a half days, I will be trying just so you guys know, right? I'll be doing my best, but you know, just... I one time asked uh, one of my best friends who has been he's she studied with Sid Banks for many 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 years, and I, and I was just curious, and I said, "What's the most valuable thing you've learned in all these years? All the time you've spent with Sid, all the reflecting you've been doing on the principles. What's the most valuable thing you can learn?" And I loved her answer because she just got quiet. She didn't 
think about it. She got quiet and waited until something occurred to her that was really alive and fresh. And she said, I know where to look. Now, it's very interesting when you're aware of yourself, when any of us start to feel tension of any kind, of any kind, we get confused, we get anxious, we get bothered, we get annoyed, we get impatient, we get irritated, we get confused. Where do we look? Now, it's very interesting to me that most people, especially adults, when they feel tension, what do they do? Do they look within for the quiet that's always there and drop into it and rest in that space of not knowing? My experience is with my clients, with myself often, that when people experience tension, the first thing they do is more thinking. Why is this happening? What can I do about it? What does this mean? I can't believe this. Why? And they just think and think and think and think and think. That's why Sid says, I've been telling people to look within beyond your thinking. Everybody gets excited. Nobody does it. Whenever we feel tension, we don't do it. And as you're under, as any person's insightful understanding deepens, in other words, you get more familiar with this space within that's quiet and full of feeling and feeling, not emotion, not ego's reactivity, full of feeling. And it and it becomes very, very practical. Very, very practical. For the past week, I've been babysitting my two youngest grandkids. And this just happened last night. We've had the best week with them. Their grandfather died, so we offered to take the kids so that would give them a chance to deal with everything going on. And they're five and seven and a half, full of energy, full of life. And we have just, boy, they don't want to think about life. They want to play. So I'd see them, they'd start to get upset and they'd just immediately come back to the present moment and play and have fun. And so literally for like a week, there was no crying, no upset, no. It was unbelievable. It was the, they were such teachers of living in the moment. Now, as they get older, when they get upset, they'll do more thinking and more thinking and more thinking and more thinking until pretty soon they're like the rest of us, just living in the world of our ideas rather than living in life. And it's all very innocent. So the most powerful thing any of us can learn is how friendly our upset and stress is, how helpful it is to wake us back up so that we fall naturally back into this quiet space, deep feeling, deep knowing. And we learn the benefit of that so that we can trust it, so that we can say, I know where to look. I know. No, not intellectually. I know the absolute truth that there's a space within where all the answers lie, everything we need. That's the only thing we need to do to find answers in life is to drop into that space, rest in that feeling, be open to where we are guided. So last night, my grandson, for the first time, got really, really, really upset. And 
That's a long story, but his dad came to visit in the afternoon, but he had to leave that night and he's, and then they're getting together right now and he's going to take them home. But, uh, his dad came after a week and then his dad had to leave and my grandson had a meltdown he was clinging to him at the door daddy 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 don't go don't go daddy don't go and 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 then he he pulled out the big guns he says if you go as soon as his as soon as people are asleep, I'm going to run away. <laughs> so we told, we told our son, it's okay. You can go. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with little Reed. What's the first thing we had to do to be able to deal with little Reed? My wife and I had to know where to look or we'd be of no help. I could see myself getting impatient. Come on, come on. I could see myself starting to feel that inner tension. We've had such a good week. Oh, what a horrible way to end things. I could see myself getting into my thinking. And then there's that knowing that I want to see grow stronger in everybody. We call it having shifts into higher levels of understanding or consciousness where you know where to look. So my wife and I at some point both just got really quiet and he's just screaming. And at one point he went into a room and closed the door and we said, well, let's just give him a minute to quiet down and then we'll go get him. And my wife went to get him and, and she opened the door and she goes, Dick and he's gone. <laughs> right away. We imagined him running down the street at night. And I went into the room and all of a sudden I heard something and I looked and he was behind the door hiding. And I burst out laughing. It was like the perfect thing to pull on us. It was like, I'll show you guys for keeping me prisoner here. I want to be with my daddy. So my wife and I went into the bed with our granddaughter and we started reading her a story and we kept inviting Reed to join us. And pretty soon he did. He came over and he laid down. And then as I got quiet, I got new and fresh thinking. This is what I see happen for any client I work with. When you know where to look and you get really quiet, all of a sudden, new and fresh ideas out of the blue come to guide you. And it occurred to me to tell a bedtime story about the two of them. And usually I make up a story and there's magicians and dragons and fairy godmothers and magic spells and all kinds of adventures at night. And uh, this time I said, okay, I'm going to have the two of them be the stars of this adventure. And I told this story of their whole visit from start to finish and all the cool things we did. And I brought out my phone and I showed them pictures and videos of them at the water park. And told the story of these two kids playing and making friends and then playing in the playground and what happened. And pretty soon, the little seven-year-old who was so upset started laughing and saying, tell this part of the story and tell this part of the story. And, and so I told the whole story and then he dropped back into that quiet space. And within minutes, they were both asleep. They woke up laughing and happy. 
And I ran to Reed and I said, Reed, I am so proud of you. And he goes, what? And I said, it's amazing what you did. You were upset. And then at a certain point, you let go of all of that upset thinking. And you got quiet again. And you found a nice feeling because that happiness is always inside of you. It just gets covered up with our upset thinking when we're caught up. You did that, buddy. You, that's what big people do. That's what I'm learning to do. That's what Mimi is learning to do. That's what your daddy and mommy are learning to do. Such a big boy. And I said, you get to decide what we have for breakfast. And he goes, blueberry pancakes. Practical. Practical is that this, this is why Sid says this space and the feeling of this space, the love in that space is always, always the answer to any situation, any problem, any upset. And the key is knowing where to look. And that's what the three of us want to focus on with you experientially. Quick show of hands. Uh, raise your hand if you could sort of identify with being the, you know, the grandparents having to figure out what to do about chaos around you. Okay. <laughs> now, okay. Raise your hand if you can identify with the grandson the having a tantrum. <laughs> Right. And now keep your hand up if you wish Dickon was your grandfather, because that would be. <laughs> but but <laughs> the, bit, the bit that I love about that story is I remember as a little kid trying so hard to stay mad. Yeah. I really wanted to punish the big people around me. You know, I'm going to stay mad and I'm going to stay up and I'm not going to get any sleep and then I'm going to die and then they'll be sorry. And I could just, it pissed me off that I couldn't stay mad for more than like 40 minutes. And then like my mom would come in and with a treat and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> right. And, and, but here's the thing. See, as we grow up, we get much better at staying mad. Right. Like, like as we grow up, we get so good at it. We could do it generationally. Like I can still be traumatized by what might happen to my great grandparents. And, 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 and that's learned. That's not natural. That's not innate. That's just a, an interesting use of a capacity we have to learn. But if it's something we've learned, it's not us. Which means if it's not helpful, we don't have to keep doing it. So in a very real way, where we're, we're, we're the kid having a tantrum and we're the wise grandparents getting still until we know what the kid having a tantrum means. And the truth is the way we're made, it, it, it just doesn't last that long. No matter how upset we are, no matter how justified our upset seems, we're made to let it go. We're made to go beyond it. Mm -hmm. and, and and each time we do like we may not get blueberry pancakes but we get better at letting it go the next time because it's just more obvious to us that we're the only ones keeping it alive you know sid talked a lot about how you, you have to recreate negativity every single time you have to recreate stress. You have to recreate pressure. You have to recreate anger. You have to recreate fear. It doesn't actually linger. You have to keep doing it to keep it there. And, and it's just that we've gotten good enough at it that we don't notice a lot of the time that we're doing it. But the second we notice that we're the ones doing it, it's really not hard to drop it either. And that's when Dickens talks about how practical this is. 
it's it's practical in the sense that as you kind of notice how well you're already made, that we are made for this. We're made for life. Then life gets much more fun and much less daunting. Like we, we start to make sense. We're not anomalies anymore. It's like, oh yeah, I was made for this. And there's that wonderful sense of place, of right place, right time, that kind of stays with us wherever we are. And it's such a delightful place to live from. It's such a, 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 a an exciting place to be because it it's Christmas morning and then it's Christmas morning again and then it's blueberry pancake morning and then it's Christmas morning. And it just like, it it has that ongoing sense of, I can't wait to see what happens next. I'm getting goosebumps, Michael, just listening to me mm -hmm. talk about that. I'm being reminded of of um, my my friend Greta. She she died a few years ago, but she was 94 years old. And uh, John and I were visiting her, and I said to her, "So, what's your secret?" Because she always seems so happy, and so just alive at 94. And she said, "Well, I wake up in the morning. I sort of get up on bed. I sort of push myself up. I sit up." I put my feet over the, the side of the bed and I and I think to myself, I wonder what's going to happen today. <laughs> it was just, I love that. I love that sense of anything can happen. This this sort of surrender, surrender to life. This this graceful surrender about, well, a lot of things could happen. But not fighting it, not pushing it away not thinking it should be any different. There's something in the surrender of just seeing what happens and then not fighting it. It's going, oh, I guess this is happening now. Oh, I didn't know I was going to drive into Copenhagen today because my dad needs my help or whatever it is. There's a, there can be enjoyment in whatever happens when we don't fight it. That's something that I've been really interested in, in looking towards lately, just this, just being with whatever is, what is occurring, what is going on in my circumstance, and where am I meeting it from? Am I meeting it from my ideas about how the day should go, or how my life should be? Or am I meeting it from this silence inside, this pure, pure beauty, that just goes, oh, okay. So I love how this is practical. And I know that when we get together, we will, there will be stories about the practical part of this. There will be stories and, and, and probably exercises where we go into our own experiences. There'll be beautiful conversations and, and, and meetings between all of us. That's no. <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah I remember a, a student or a potential student on one of my programs uh, emailing and going uh is 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 this going to be spiritual or is this going to be talking about spiritual and and i i kind of liked the question i was like um because it forced me to kind of look at what the difference was and to me it makes sense to call something spiritual that's infused with spirit, that's infused with life, that is full of life. You know, 
you, you know, life abundant, the fullness of life. And talking about it sometimes evokes it. There, there's a beautiful, um, and I don't know the Latin, but uh, Carl Jung, the, the famous psychotherapist, had a quote uh, on his desk that it was also on his tombstone. And it, it translated roughly to invoked or not invoked, God is present. And so when we come together for something like this, we're, we're deliberately invoking something that is already present. But by invoking it, we presence it more. We notice it. And when you notice that we're made of this, like this is us. It, it life gets beautiful without anything changing immediately on the outside. I always I always say that the the impact of this conversation, of this kind of immersion, is 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 that nothing changes but everything's different. And then if you stay in it, everything starts to change. And so, you know, for myself, as much as the chance to spend the time with Dickon and Natasha, as much as the chance to spend the time with all of you, like I know what happens. I not only have a beautiful few days. But that same spirit and aliveness starts to infuse into my world when I leave. It comes with me as it was always there anyways. And and for me, that's the, you know, like, will, will you have a nice time? You'll struggle not to. But, you know, hey, if you're tough enough, I bet you can do it. But... But when you leave, it comes with. And that for me is the, the, the gold ring, the prize. This is a good place to, to end. <laughs>